Hey everyone, Matt Seuss here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about all that fun and exciting stuff like resolution and DPI and PPI so that you get a really good understanding of how large your file actually is. Is it a high res image? Is it a low res image? You know, geez, it says 72 DPI. How large can I print that? We're going to get rid of a lot of the myths that go around with, uh, it just seems like so many people don't understand this. So I'm going to break this down for you. Now, what is really cool about this is that this happens to be one of the videos in my picture perfect printing course, my new online course that is all about printing, whether you're printing from home or you're going to be sending it out to a lab. If you want to know about soft proofing and about resolution and about color management and workflows and resizing and sharpening and what printers to use, what papers to do and on and on and on. This is a complete course on printing. Go ahead, take a look down below. I got a link for it and enjoy this free video that is from that picture perfect printing course. And by the way, if you do like what you see here, be sure to hit that like button down below. Be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you find a whole lot more exciting videos, all photography related. And hey, let's get started on learning that fun stuff about resolution, DPI, PPI, and all that fun stuff. One of the most important things you need to understand about your files is its resolution and how that's going to map into how large you can print, how many pixels you have per inch and all that stuff. And there are, boy, I can't tell you how confusing of a subject this is for so many people. I have dealt with graphic designers at magazines who do not understand this terminology here. It can be a little confusing. I'm going to try and make it as simple as possible because when you really think about it, it is really simple. There's going to be a little bit of math involved. I'm going to make the math really easy for you to understand though. So let's go ahead here because I got to, there's, so much misinformation out there and so many people do not understand this. Let's take a look at a couple things here now because we're going to be talking about DPI and PPI and resolution and all that stuff. For one, DPI does not equal PPI. Everyone gets this confused, okay? DPI equals dots per inch. This is what happens when your printer is printing your photo. It is printing, it uses ink, little tiny, tiny droplets coming out of the nozzle's head, and it prints so many dots per inch. The higher the dots per inch, the higher the quality is going to be of your print. If you're printing for a billboard, you're seeing that from such a far distance away, they can get away with printing at something like 80 dots per inch. If you're looking at a fine art photo paper print, you're probably gonna be printing at around 1440, 1400 dots per inch or 2880 dots per inch. That's ink dots per inch. Dots per inch is printing. PPI, pixels per inch, is when we're preparing our photo. Okay, you've heard of the, you know, you've heard of people saying, hey, I need a 300, sometimes they say DPI photo, but it's, it's PPI photo. I need a high resolution photo, and they're assuming that it means 300. Okay, here's, this is going to go into a couple of the other myths. Now I'm going to show you the, the actual facts and explain what the myths are here. So DPI and PPI have absolutely nothing to do with file size. I can't tell you how many times I've sent a small JPEG file and they're like, Oh, this doesn't have enough resolution because it's only a five meg file. I'll, I'll show you how all these things work here in a second, but it's it, DPI and PPI. Those settings have nothing to do with determining your file size. They also have absolutely nothing to do with the, de with determining if it's a high or low resolution file. You can't tell that by looking just at the DPI or, you know, or the PPI actually in Photoshop. And file size has absolutely nothing to do with how high or low resolution a file is. Let's start breaking all these things down and we're gonna go into Photoshop here. Okay, so I have this photo up here and I'm just gonna go into the image size on it and let's take a look at this photo right now. So we can see here, this is at a resolution of 300. Remember, it's not dots per inch in Photoshop, it is pixels per inch. This is the document's resolution here. And right now this is mapped out to do 300 pixels per inch. So for every inch of photo that I have, a physical inch, there would be 300 pixels in that. Let's do a little bit of math here. And let me go ahead and clear, clear out these numbers that I had here before. The dimensions right up on top here, this is the only 
item here that tells you how big your file is, how many pixels are in it. Okay, let's do some math. Let's take that 10,000, okay? And that is my, this picture here is 10,000 pixels wide by 6,667 pixels high. Let's take those two numbers and multiply them. Okay, we end up getting a number that is 66,670,000. 66,000,000, okay? That's, this is the megapixels now of this file. This is a 66.67 megapixel image. To get megapixels, just take your document size in pixels and multiply them together, and then you'll figure out exactly what the megapixel is of that image. That is step number one in understanding this. Now, if we are printing this and we have a document that is 10,000 pixels wide, and if we are going to print this and we're sending it to the printer to print 300 of those pixels for every inch, any idea how wide we can print this, this or any idea how wide this will print? Just take that 10,000, divide it by 300, right? Because we're putting 300 pixels into every inch. And what do we get? 33.33. Same thing for the height. We can take that 6667, divide that by 300, and we know that this will now print at 22.23 inches tall. We can also see that in Photoshop when I just change the pixels over here to inches. And we can see now that if I send this to the printer at a 300 pixel per inch resolution, this is going to print 33 uh, by 22 inches. Now let's uncheck this resample here because I want to show you something else. And this is where people start getting a little confused. And so stay with me here. The resolution, I'm going to change that resolution. And instead of 300 pixels per inch, my Epson printer actually prefers 240. And I'll explain why in another lesson. But let me just put in 240 here. I'm not resampling anything. And so if I put in 240, okay, my file size, image size is still the same. I did not resample anything, so my dimensions are still 10,000 pixels by 6667. However, now if I'm sending this to the printer to then print 240 pixels for every inch, look at that. I can now print 41.667 inches by 27.7 and change inches high. If I were to lower this to 72, okay, look at that. Now I'm printing at 92 inches high by 139 inches wide. So the resolution, you know, the, the resolution being sent to the printer, how many pixels per inch is going to be mapped into the DPI of the printer has changed, allowing me to print larger. But the dimensions, the physical dimensions of the print of the file stay the same. Now, sending it at 72 pixels per inch, that means that for every inch of paper, the printer is then printing the dots. I mean, you're going to see this. You're not going to want to send it to your printer at 72 pixels per inch unless you were printing for a billboard because you're, you're seeing that from such a far distance away. But photo prints, we're looking up close. We're not going to want to send it to that resolution. So that's where some people get confused thinking that, oh, yeah, it's a low resolution. I have literally had uh, magazines that I've sent my files to to be reproduced in a magazine. And for some reason, I just had it at the 72 pixels per inch. And I get a phone call and they're like, hey, you sent us a low resolution image. It's only 72 DPI. And I was like, well, for one, it should be 72 PPI. But I was like, what is the dimensions on it? What's the uh, pixel dimensions? And they're like, oh, it's uh, 10,000 pixels wide. And I'm like, okay, that's still the high resolution file. And they're like, no, 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 it's 72 DPI, we need a, a 300 DPI photo. So instead of just telling them how easy they can do this on their own computer, all I did was I just took the file, opened it up in Photoshop, just like we're seeing right here. Didn't resample, didn't do anything. Sent it to set it at 300 and then hit OK. Saved it as a JPEG, the same file size as what they received before. They didn't know anything. It, you know, they're like, oh, good. Thanks for sending us the high resolution file. And I'm like, it was the same size. And let's talk about size here. Let's go into, I have some other samples here just to show you that size here. Now, this photo here is what I have opened up right now. That's the PSD file. So there's no compression at all. That's a 400 meg file on my hard disk. Let's take a look at these two here. One says 72 PPI and the other says 300 PPI. Same exact file size. Now, these are saved as JPEGs. Let's open these up here into Photoshop just to show you. 
And so we got these now opening up in Photoshop. Here is my 300 PPI image. Here is my 72 PPI image. And remember, this is my main PSD image. Let's just take a look at this just to double check. See, that's at 72 pixels per inch. It's still 10,000 by 6667. Opening up in Photoshop, it's 190 meg file. Go to here. 300, it's still 10,000 by 6667, 190 meg file opened up in Photoshop. They are a much smaller file size than this one here, but because I saved them as JPEGs, now they are compressed files, so they are a smaller file size on my hard drive. They are the same pixel dimensions set up for different resolutions here, but the same pixel dimensions, each one of these files is identical, except for it just saying 72 here. And I can make this one on right here, identical to this one over here on the right, just by unchecking checking the sampling, put that at 300, hit OK. Look at that. So we're at 300, 10,000, everything's the same here. And now it is the exact same over here as well. Another example on file size is this one here. This one set up at 300 PPI. And look at that. It's a 5 meg file, 5 megabyte file instead of 50 megabytes. Well, all I did, it's still 300 resolution, 10,000 by 6667. Remember, resolution doesn't have anything to do with file size, but I saved it as a JPEG 4 instead of a JPEG 12. It had much more compression. So the file size has absolutely nothing to do with how high res of, or low res a photo you have is. Now, all of this is important to understand because we're going to need to figure out how large we can enlarge ours. You know, first, how large can we print it right now without enlarging anything based on what printer we're sending it to. And then understanding this is also gonna play a key into understanding how large we can sort of theoretically increase our images too. I mean, cause you know, in theory, I mean, we can enlarge them as large as possible, but there's certain thresholds that we may not want to pa pass depending on what medium we're printing on, what size, where, how far of a distance it's going to be viewed and everything like that. But understanding this here is key to understanding your file sizes and what you can at least natively print without having to do any resizing at all. It's also gonna help you too if you happen to send your photos out to a lab and they want the, the resolution to be 300 pixels per inch, you'll, uh, once we do some more lessons on this, you'll know exactly how to change that you'll probably know more about this than the lab that you're sending it to. Trust me, there's a lot of misinformation out there. Watch this video again, get a grasp on it. If you have any questions, ask them down in the, in the comments below.